this is the fourth and last video in the late sanding station series. I'll begin by making the dust cover for the thickness sander. As you can see, I'll use this PVC pipe for that purpose. I'll cut it lengthwise and like this, so that I can insert it in the sanding drum. Using this heat gun, I'll try to bend the PVC into shape. These are the covers for the ends of the pipe. They will also help me obtain a perfect bend. Now I'll glue the 0.5mm maple veneer. This is merely decorative. We could leave the pipe as it is or paint it. I'll use contact glue, making sure there are no pockets of air underneath the veneer. Now I'll machine these parts that will allow me to insert the dust pipe. I give them a curved shape and glue them in the center of the cover. I drill the PVC slowly being careful not to break it. The plywood will function as a guide. These L-shaped plywood parts will help me put the dust cover in its place. The cover must be attached and turned like this. A couple of screws will be enough to stop it from moving. Now it's time to adjust the sanding drum. I'll use this piece of MDF, to which I've glued some P60 sandpaper. I adjust the height and proceed very slowly like this. I've noticed that, for the cylinder to be even, I must remove about 2 mm of wood on one of the ends, so it'll take a few minutes before I can make it perfect. The dust cover seems to be working as intended. Some of the thickest particles of sawdust do fall on the table, but most of it is sucked out, and I'm not even using a particularly powerful vacuum. Good thing too, because this operation would blow sawdust all over our workshop. Now that the drum seems to be finalized, the next step is to glue this velcro strip to it. I cut this piece of paper to use as template. We should make sure the measurements are right if we don't want to do it twice. We must work out the circumference of the cylinder, which we can do by multiplying its diameter by pi. The result will be this diagonal measurement. I cut the velcro and stick it like this. The fact that it's self-adhesive makes the job so much easier.
I haven't found any strips longer than one meter in my area, so I'll have to put in on the end the piece that I cut at the beginning. I'll heat up its sticky surface a little bit to improve its adhesion. However, applying too much heat could render the Velcro useless. Now it's time to cut the sandpaper. This diagonal must be as long as the one we worked out earlier. Then I put it in place like this. I'll try it with P60 sandpaper because it's what I have in my workshop, although P80 might be enough for this thickness sander. The sandpaper itself will serve as template to cut replacements in the future. I'll use the opportunity to sand the collar off the Formica. It was eventually going to wear away anyhow. As you can see, it's quite easy. Now all that's left is make sure everything works. I choose the poly configuration with the lowest wraps. 800 revolutions per minute will be more than enough. We must keep in mind that it's not advisable to push the machine too hard. It's always better to make several runs. The layers of the plywood allow me to see if the thickness sander is working properly, and that seems to be the case. Now I'll try it with this wider piece of pine wood. I've marked this surface with a pencil to see if it works correctly. Another bit of advice to keep in mind is that once we insert the piece we want to sand, we must run it at an even speed and without stopping, because the sandpaper will damage the result if we stop proceeding. I've also drilled this hole on the base for the sanding disc and made this cover to improve dust removal. The engine must be turned off before attaching the dust pipe and adjusting the thickness sander's height, as the belt is too close and could be dangerous. The plans should be available on my website in a few days. See you soon!